prison. I'm going to pick up on a couple of things that have been said, because Josie said she's working on a big, ambitious and scary project in Leicester, and I'm working on a big, ambitious and scary project in Manchester, which is to turn all of Manchester into an interactive learning city by linking up everything that goes with on, on there. Um, and actually, I'm not phased by it, because I've worked in every aspect. You know, we're working with a museum on a project called uh, Mosey Along, and we're working with the universities and the schools and so on. And Doug said an interesting word at the start. He said, we're not here to give permissions. Actually, the interesting thing I found about trying to make that project work in Manchester is my job is to give permissions, because everybody's scared of doing something different to what they normally do. So I just go to people and say, what is it you want to do on this project? Then do it. I'll take the responsibility. And actually, that's what I used to do in government, and that's what I used to do when I was a teacher. Because in the main, we end up getting into very limited ways of doing things. I think that's the only way of doing it. And nobody seems to give permission. So if you want to do anything, you want permission, that's my job. I'm the guy that will give commissions. permissions. Actually, Doug, I think you'll find that that's what you're going to have to do in the project, is find ways of giving permissions. So um, I'm going to pick up in for this talk, because I was head of community programs at Bet. I set up a community project in uh, Deptford. It's an environmental creek, part of a group of urban ecologists. It took us 10 years to, to build it. First of all, we had to stop them damming up the creek in order to put marinas in it, you know, like Chelsea. Um, so um, I want to pick up on what we mean by community. But Doug said to me, don't talk any of that highfalutin stuff. We've got teachers here. So I'm going to keep this. <laughs> <laughs> own your own words, Doug. <laughs> So I'm going to start with three things. And he said, look, Kerry's got a great book. And I've got Kerry's book. It's here. It's a Kindle. Uh, and I'm going to start with something that Kerry says, which is really interesting, around citizenship. So that's Learning Futures. It's a Kindle. I'm going to pick up on some stuff that John Seeley Brown, have people heard of John Seeley Brown? Got a really interesting book come out called A New Culture of Learning. And John Seeley Brown's a big Web 2. But, um, and I do a lot of stuff with Web 2. But the kind of stuff I'm interested in is the post-Web 2. What I'm interested in, what we've learned in using social media tells us about uh, pedagogy and learning. You know, because you can only make te technology work for learning if you really know about learning. You can't just whack something in there. And another book, which arrived by Van this morning, which is unusual because I try to get it on Kindle, is a book called Making is Connecting by David Gauntlet. Anybody heard of David Gauntlet's thing? He's the guy that does lessons with Lego. You know, whatever it is, if you're planning the future of the economy, he'll give you a pack of Lego and say, build the Lego solution to the economic problems. So, I'm going to pick up on those things around, and the two C words are, you know, capital C, community, small C, though, but it's also citizenship. So am I, I guess I'm running out of time. How do I move this on? OK, there it is. it's that one, is it? Right. So, so that's what I talk about. So slow citizenship, that's something that Kerry talks about. And that ties in with the notion of 2035 that Doug was talking about. Actually, I think David Gauntlet says more interesting things about what we can do in 2035, because it's about building stuff rather than learning stuff. And I'm, I'm interested in, in, in a number of things, including how you link creativity and doing things to learning and remembering stuff rather than just working with curricula. And Kerry says an interesting thing that, you know, um, yeah, so, so I'm going to look at, she focused on the notion of slow stitch. And so it'll take 25 years to make a serious change. So I'm glad that we're working towards 2014. And I have spent a number of times working on policy documents in, in government. I've got a number of ways that you might want to use to turn what you're doing into policy statements. And there's some stuff about that. But So my starting point is the purpose of education, I think, as everybody here is, is just preparing people for living in society. And the problem I have with our education system is it's like preparing people for living in the 19th century rather than the one that we're living in at the moment. And, and part of my taking on that is that actually because when we learnt before we had formal learning systems, we kind of learnt to problem solve, and we solved the problems that we were facing. The global crisis in economics, in environment, and whatever way you want to do it, we would basically ignore that. My favourite thing I've seen about this was that people who went to Imperial College uh, in maths and do a master's degree in maths, in recent years they've been going to the city because they're the people that do the maths and create the algorithms to generate the derivatives and uh, make money in the way that brings down the economic systems. Half of the Imperial College masters, I think it's the master's degree, the year before the credit crunch they went off to the city to make even better algorithms to, for screwing up the stock market or making money for them. The year after, when we saw that that didn't work, the same percentage of them went off 
You know, so they weren't interested in solving the problem of having a credit crunch. They were interested in, oh, that's a high status job. Shall I do research in maths? That's £15,000 a year. Shall I go and work in the city? That's £150,000 a year. I'll go there even though I'm going to make things worse. So we know no longer know how to cope with our environment. So that's the kind of sets of issues that I'm interested in. If you read my blog post, I picked up on something called uh, the democratic intellect. Uh, I went to a talk at the Ragged University by, by Pat Kane, who's working with the Scottish government on the follow-up to their GLOW system, which is their um, school-based VLE that works across the country. And they're tapping on a tradition in Scotland known as the democratic intellect, which is that you use your brains for making a better society. And um, he challenged the room that I was in, and it was lots of people, it was in London, so it was lots of people that were involved in the UCL occupations and other things, um, to say how they would use their brains to be better citizens. And I thought, well, my take is no one in this room will know how to do that because we're not taught how to do that. And so I didn't say anything, and I waited at the end, and I pointed out the fact that you notice that nobody answered your question. Actually, we don't have a democratic intellect. We don't know how to use our brains to make a better society. So we keep quiet about it, and we go to the stock market and try and make things worse. And I think what Kerry says about slow citizenship, and this is her definition, is that we should be involved in a sustained commitment to the lived communities, local neighbourhoods and social relationships through which we live. And I don't think we do that in education. And my take is I want to live in a socially inclusive society. And the only way you do that is you make learning participative. You do that through co-creating learning, through brokering learning, by building up relationships with your learners. Uh, and, and I want to pick up on two ways that I've worked with that do that. So one that, that we can do it in the classroom, one we do it in the community. And I was lucky when I was working with the government to be part of a project looking at innovations in learning. There was a guy called Kevin Donovan who was trying to create a topology of how do you innovate in learning, irrespective of whether it was new technology or, or what. And the most interesting session we had was with the Star Award winning teachers. Do you know the Star Awards? It's the Putnam thing where he wanted Oscars for teachers to celebrate good quality teaching. And we had a day with four or five, uh, I think four stayed till after lunch. And in the end, we got it down to three points. And I was talking to Dick about this earlier because it takes a number of years to get there. Have people heard of this thing that Richard Sennett says about being a craftsman, that you need 10,000 hours of working at something? And I think actually there's a craft of teaching. I did a post on that, that recently. And it, part of my thinking came from talking to these teachers. And there were three dimensions to it. The first thing you had to master your subject. That is, you have to master your subject for teaching because it was different from mastering your subject for learning that they'd done as a degree. And once you'd got an understanding of how the subject that you were, uh, had a degree in worked in a classroom when you were teaching it rather than when you were learning it, you then had to master, of course you're doing this simultaneously, but you had to master the learning environment, which was then typically a classroom, but it would be the same whether you're in a VLE or you're in a group or you know, however that works. You have to master that. What might be called managing, but it's kind of more subtle than that. And then they all said, once you've got on top of that, and my take is once you've built that craft, you turn control over to the learners. So there's a three-stage process. But in, and, and this typically takes them three to five years. We're not normally given that time to build up a craft because we're already given targets to deliver to which are outside our control. And in, in, in the new culture of learning, John City Brown says, we need to be learning in the collective. That is, there are voluntary communities of learning that, that is Rather than have a classroom that imposes the community that you're in, you should be able to move around within that. I see I'm running out of time, so I'm going to say two more points. I did some research with uh, UK Line Centres, which were community-based. I don't know if people know about them, but they're community-based technology centres. And we looked at how people who are socially excluded learn. Because my take is everybody wants to learn. Those people that we look at being socially excluded, in my opinion, being excluded by the national curriculum that does, uh, only gives a single way of delivering stuff. And what we found is everybody wants to learn if you can let them start with their interests. I put passion in there because that's the way John Seeley Brown does it. You should have open, welcoming centres and you should have hooks for bringing people in. And Kerry talks about this in the, in the slow citizenship model. But what we found was, most of all, you needed a community responsive curriculum. You need to take uh, the interests of people and build learning around what they're interested in. Lots of these centres started with hooks into their community, which could be anti-crime or working with the police or building up crashes or helping single mums. But once they had a hook that brought people in, they would then learn in a way that was appropriate to that context. <coughs> and what David Gauntlet says in Making This Connect is we no, want, no longer want to sit back and be told what to do, which I think is the end result of the national curriculum approach. We want to be creative and making is connecting. If we make stuff, we will connect with people. So 
If we take Kerry's approach of having slow citizenship, a slow citizenship approach to learning means putting the community, friendships, relationships, connecting into the community that you're based in, having a community responsive curriculum that responds to local needs. And so that education isn't about educating people to leave their communities and become successful somewhere else, but staying within that community and building it. And, a, and enable, and this is another phrase from Kerry, future building schools, because as David Gornet says, we're making the future rather than receiving it. So I'm from the Learning Generate context. We call that finding a coincidence of motivations that leads to agile configurations. I think that's what we're doing today. Okay.